What's your favorite part of a dog's body? I know you have one. My favorite is the ears. I mean, look at those flippy floppies. So you can imagine, I was super excited to talk about the French Bulldog breed today. I mean, if you were gonna talk about ears, we simply have to talk about the French Bulldog. Guys, this dog is so popular right now, and for good reason. They're this nice, smallish size, they don't require an intense amount of exercise as a doodle or a lab, and well, <laughs> they're just super cute. But with popularity comes some downsides for you and the dog. So today we're gonna continue our series of breed-focused videos. Now, if you're doing research about what breed of puppy to get, Hopefully you watch the videos on labs and German shepherds and doodles, and now this one. Or if you have a Frenchie and you just need a little straight to the scoop, well, let's get going. I have some important information I wanna share. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. This is the part of the video where I tell you to subscribe. Week after week, we are turning out some great content and puppy raising and training for you. So hit that bell to get notified when the next video is available and when we go live to talk about other puppy topics too. So those adorable Frenchies, where did they begin? Well, did you know that these cuties were actually cast offs from the 1800s in England? Here's the story. In the UK in the 1800s, bulldogs were used for bull baiting, a sport where dogs were used to bait and attack bulls. But in 1835, cockfighting, bullfighting, fox hunting, and other blood sports were outlawed. I'm loving how they saw these activities as cruel to the animals way back then. After this change in the law, English bulldogs became popular as companion dogs and were bred with terriers and pugs to reduce their size. The smaller size became very popular among the factory workers because these common loyal dogs would sit on the workers' laps while they worked, but then take care of the workshop rats at night. That sounds like a great arrangement to me. I'm gonna need to talk to Pickles about the spiders around our house. Well, many of these skilled workers immigrated to France, taking their pups with them. The small, bad-eared bulldogs were an instant hit with the French. Soon, writers, artists, fashion designers all over Paris were requesting these adorable pups. Now, the English breeders thought this was great. In England, the ears were considered a flaw of the breed, so they were eager to ship them off. Pretty soon, the high society French ladies fell in love with this breed, and the French Bulldog became a status symbol. Now, the breed showed up in the US in the late 19th century. That's where they got the name Frenchie. They were popular with high society pet owners in the US too. The Rockefellers and the JP Morgan families both owned them. Now, let's fast forward to today. This breed has changed a lot. I found a great blog post by The Science of Dogs. They showed a comparison of several breeds using the before photo from the 1915 book, Dogs of All Nations by Walter Mason. Take a look at what the breed used to look like over a hundred years ago. Notice the legs are a lot longer and the body less round that you might see today. The face isn't as flat as today's Frenchies. Now there are a lot of dogs who have changed a lot over the last hundred years. So that's a good thing to learn about when you're doing your research on dog breeds. That can tell you a lot about the potential health problems too. Unfortunately, with popularity, comes challenges. Over the last 100 years, these dogs have become so popular that they run the risk of being banned. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, when a dog breed becomes highly sought after, unfortunately, it lends itself to backyard breeders who are not looking out for the long-term interests of the breed. They see it as a quick source of income and soon become part of the overall decline of the breed's health and wellness. Now, if a breeder isn't carefully trying to breed out medical issues, they're contributing to the problem. Breeds like pugs and French bulldogs could be banned across the UK over concerns about dangerous overbreeding. Now let's talk about some of those medical issues to look out for if you have a Frenchie or you're thinking of getting one. Now the French bulldog is high maintenance and could cost more in vet visits than other dog breeds. French bulldogs often incur spinal disorders, heart defects, joint disease, and eye problems. I mean, look at the list of recommended health tests from the Frenchie Breed Club. They recommend a patella evaluation, a hip evaluation, a cardiac exam, and an ophthalmologist evaluation. That's a lot of canine experts, and it sounds pretty expensive, but you can start with your regular vet and then go from there. Be sure to keep up with the regular vet visits at least once a year, or more often if you're seeing signs of injury, 
or you're concerned. Now ask your vet what to look for is early signs of medical problems. And be sure to put aside some money for the prescriptions or supplements your vet recommends. Now these meds can really prolong a dog's comfortable life. So just remember that a dog who is in chronic pain is often not a pleasant dog to be around. Now is a good time to remind you of the importance of pet insurance. So at the time of this recording, I don't have a company that I'm affiliated with, but in this video, I give you some good things to consider when shopping around. Pet insurance is really recommended these days with the rising costs of medical care for pets. Okay, I'm not all doom and gloom here. Now, it's very possible to have a healthy Frenchie who lives a long and loving life under your care. Let's talk about how to care for the dog, both body and mind. Frenchies don't have nearly the grooming needs as the doodles do. A weekly brushing with a medium bristled brush should do the trick. You might even find a rubber grooming mitt works well, or one of those gloves that helps remove shedding hair. Frenchies are not hypoallergenic, so regular brushing will keep the shedding down. Their short hair usually keeps them from needing baths too often. In general, it's best not to overbathe your dog as the natural oils in their coat help keep their skin healthy. Try to wait every six to eight weeks in between baths if you can, and introduce it slowly and positively as I've taught you in this video. Now this breed is pretty low to the ground, so if you need a quick wipe down with a wet washcloth when coming inside, then you can teach your dog how to tolerate that nicely. Now if you need help with that, my online course at the pro level can get you there. All right, let's get to the fun stuff, activities and training for your Frenchie. Before we go further, I just wanna remind you that this amazing information is available to you for free on this great, super awesome YouTube channel. My team and I put a lot of effort into making these great videos for you, so if you'd like to show your thanks, consider using a small tip. YouTube has that thanks button. I'd love it if you'd share this video with your fellow Frenchie friends too. Okay, so Frenchies are often very fun to take out and about. Most people love them, and a lot of Frenchies are confident and pretty interested in the world around them. And if they receive, proper positive socialization during the window before 16 weeks old, they often handle outings with ease. Now, if you're wondering if you're doing it right, this video here is gonna give you some great information. Keep in mind that you, the human, have a very important role in watching your Frenchie's body language for signs of fatigue when you're out socializing. Now with their flat faces, they simply can't get as much oxygen in as other breeds. So every activity is just, just a little bit more tiring for them. Frenchies should never be allowed to exert themselves in hot or humid weather either. That falls on you to make sure they get frequent breaks or leave them at home if it's too hot outside. Now Frenchies don't really like to swim, partly because it's not easy for them. It's not a comfortable activity either. There are always exceptions to the rule though. And if you have a Frenchie who loves to swim, tell me about it in the comments. But it is good to introduce your Frenchie to water, but I'd stick with a kiddie pool with just a few inches of water in it for him to play in. Now your puppy would probably appreciate getting his paws wet and staying cool, but not actually immersing himself in the water. Before introducing water, watch this video for a great way to do it. Now, I want you to picture a children's roller coaster. What does that have to do with dog training, you ask? This relates to how we recommend you play with your dogs. We're looking for gentle rises and falls in energy level. We aren't looking for extreme ups and downs when playing with your dog. This is definitely true for Frenchies who need gradual increases in activity and then frequent cool downs and decompression time. Due to their limited oxygen level, they simply don't need those long walks that some breeds do. Sniffing, exploring, meandering, and plenty of rest is great for your Frenchie. How much exercise your Frenchie needs is actually going to depend a lot on your unique dog, but just be sure that you offer a healthy balance of physical and mental enrichment. Watch your dog's battery and definitely be the moderator of play and activity. Now, he isn't likely to limit himself, so you'll need to do it. Play dates are when I often see people miss the mark with their Frenchies. This breed is often very social and it's fun to see them play with other dogs, but they won't build in their own breaks, which could lead to heat stroke. So that's your job. Build in a lot of pauses in play so your Frenchie doesn't get overexerted. Finally, let's get to my favorite part, training. <laughs> when I was doing research for this video, I came across more than one website that labeled this breed stubborn. <laughs> that drives me crazy. There's actually no such thing as a stubborn dog. It's not an emotion that they're actually capable of. Puppies may seem like they refuse to do things, but it's usually because they are, one, overwhelmed, two, have a lack of motivation, three, unsure of what they're supposed to do, and four, 
haven't been reinforced properly. Now, it's up to the human to evaluate the situation and figure out how to approach it differently. Now, when training a Frenchie, pay close attention to the treats that you use to motivate them. Frenchies are prone to obesity, which can damage their physical structure and put them at higher risk for some of the other breed's health issues. I recommend using kibble for training, which ensures they don't overeat and helps them get the nutrition they need. And if you want to make the kibble more interesting, so they are more excited about it, consider getting a different type of kibble. Now, if you use the same brand but a different protein source, this often tastes like a treat to the dog. Instead of labeling the dog stubborn, I often like to say that the dog is just not sure about what you want them to do. Now this comes down to training. In my experience with this breed, a lot of people don't put in a lot of training early enough with this lower energy dog. They might not see quite as many challenging behaviors, so the human might get a little complacent on the training. I do not recommend this. I actually suggest that you do not miss these early opportunities to start training. Start it when your puppy is young and keep up with it to keep the momentum going. Too many of my clients have started their lives with their new puppy with lots of coddling and not really doing much training early on. Now, if you follow my online course, you can avoid this issue and go with the pace that works for you and your Frenchie. Of course, I recommend snuggle time and plenty of bonding, but Balance that with teaching your dog what you'd like him to do, and it's a win-win for both of you. Now, this breed can also be called lazy, but I want you to keep in mind their stature. They simply have a natural tendency to be more low-key and low-energy through their oxygen intake. So, as the owner, just watch carefully for their natural energy levels throughout the day and do training sessions when it seems to be a good time for the dog. You're gonna likely need to keep the sessions short, but more frequent. And just remember that this is a different physical makeup of the dog that you might be used to. You need to keep in mind how it feels to have short legs and a heavier midsection. Okay, that's a wrap for today, but remember what I said, research a reputable breeder for your Frenchie. Keep up with vet visits and get pet insurance. Keep activity levels comfortable, especially in the heat. Watch for obesity and other medical issues that are common with this breed. And finally, don't get complacent on the training. Make up for their lack of physical activity with great mental games that are gonna help you bond and allow your Frenchie to lead a fulfilling and enriching life. All right, in the comments below, tell me the name of your Frenchie. If you don't have one, tell me which breed you'd like me to review next. 